Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking, this is Fresh K and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the tools and techniques to find C2s within the wild. This is my go-to C2 tracker for control panels which are on the web. You can scroll through this site kindly provided by Veryback and look through some of the different malware families and you'll get a link to their malware c2 panel now if you're wondering what a malware c2 panel is it's a web page that you can log into as a threat actor and control your infections get information that was stolen from your infections and also control your malware and these are very commonly found on the web a lot of different pieces of malware will offer these as a way for the customer to control the malware that they have purchased now we could go and we could check out any of these malware c2s and we'll see the login page and this is just a normal web page that you can log into but instead of relying on very back c2 tracker how do we find some of these ourselves well that's what we're going to be taking a look at within this video now before we go forward before you open any c2 panel on your computer you really want to be doing this within a vm with a vpn enabled so please keep that in mind while we go and continue with this research so along with the normal web panel C2 panels, you will see that a lot of other malware will be making use of different protocols and different methods for tracking their infections and acting as a command and control. Veryback C2 tracker only does malware that uses the HTTP protocol. So if you want to find something that doesn't use this protocol, then you can also take a look at ThreatFox. And ThreatFox is another site provided by ABUCH, which just lists out some submissions by its users for C2s for all kinds of different malware, not just HTTP protocol malware. And scrolling through it, we do see some things such as Raccoon Stealer, and this is the C2 for it. But we also see C2s for Cobalt Strike, and this won't be using HTTP or it might be using something similar but certainly won't have a web panel exposed to the internet. Now this is great to find C2s that have already been found by other researchers but how do we find C2s of our own? Well for some pieces of malware such as Amade we can find their C2 panels quite easily. You can see an example of a C2 panel URL here usually starting with a domain a random file folder on that domain and then the PHP file for the web panel. And this isn't too different for when we look at the C2 for an Amade execution, we see that it, instead of it talking to the login.php file, it'll be talking to the index.php file with the folder and the IP. So if you want to actually find a panel, you can go for Amade and just simply visit that index.php file and it will redirect you into the login page. Now you've got a web panel for this specific piece of malware. But what if you don't have the binary or a execution of that binary to find out the C2? Or you just want to find other C2 similar but don't have all of the binaries that might be being spread over the internet? Well, that's where some of these new techniques come in to be able to find these C2s. So one of the first methods of finding a C2 panel without knowing the binary is by taking the IP of one of these web panels and searching it in some host searches such as Sansys or Shodan. And then from there we could create a dork for these search engines and try to find more of the same C2. So what I've done is I've taken an IP of this Luma C2 and I've searched it up within Census. Now we get a bit of information on Census, such as the protocol is SSH and it's running the HTTP web service, 
SSH we're not too bothered about. And of course we are bothered about the HTTP service because this is where the C2 panel is working on. So for this service, I'm going to click on view all data and we are faced with all kinds of different data that we can use to put together a dock to find more of these C2 panels. So scrolling through it, we need to kind of pick out which one of these attributes and their value we want to search for. And we can of course chain two or more together so that it makes our search more accurate. Now, of course we could search for something like the service name being HTTP, but this isn't gonna narrow down our search too much. So looking through it, we see all kinds of different headers being set and other headers that is actually used by census when it requests the site. But I usually have a go-to list of some of the different searches that I'll do when I'm trying to find these web C2s. First of all, the response HTML tags, we could see a title page and this will set the title of the tab within your browser. Now, some different C2s will have a unique title that may use the malware name or something unique and you can search by this and usually in only one search you'll be faced with all of the C2s that census has searched. But this title for this C2 is simply Russian for login. If we search this we're not going to find too much. Now we can also look at the response body size. I'm going to quickly give this a go because this is a somewhat of a unique number and opening that search we see that we get 563 results. Not too bad of a start but we also might want to combine that with some other searches to narrow it down and to do that I have searched here for 146130 and I'm going to look for a different IP on census and that way I can compare the two and see whether they have any kind of matching attributes that we can search for. That way it's easier for us to find out what might be common between these different C2 installations. Now again we see comparing the two this title login and it also has that body size that I searched for and comparing the two we see that they both have that login although the body size for the second C2 isn't the same so this isn't something that's too reliable to search for. Scrolling down we do see the response body and we could maybe use this to search for some of the HTML that's actually in the web page. And scrolling down even more, we get a SHA-256 hash of the web panel itself. Although comparing the two, they're not matching. This is probably because there's some kind of dynamic content within the web page that stops us from searching for it. And that will generate a, a unique hash. So we're going to use this HTML title and that gets us 26 results. And then we can narrow it down by using some of the HTML data within the response of the C2 and use that to find out more of what we could search for. So in the response of the C2, I see a bit of Russian here. So what I'm gonna do is copy and paste that and I'm going to put it into our new search and I'm gonna type in and and then I'm going to do services.http response.body and that needs to contain what I just copied and pasted. And that way we can make sure that the responses and the services that are given will have the login in the title and then also the response with that Russian within it. We can also add one more thing, which is the services.port needs to be 80 because it appears that this is what all of the ports are running on for the Luma C2. And this reduces our search to 21 results. So is this correct? Well, we could take one of these IPs and we can put it into urlscan.io, another service that I use a lot. And this site will allow for you to put in an IP, search it, and it will go and it will request out to it for you so that you don't have to touch it with your personal machine if you're worried about OPSEC and so on. Once it's finished, we get a screenshot of the web panel 
And looking at it, we can see that it matches what a Luma C2 web panel looks like, which is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. But there's another way of also finding HTTP panels through URL scan. Now, because this tool is used by all kinds of different researchers, and they submit their URLs on the public setting, we can take a look at all of the submissions. Now, if I click on similar, we get some similar hits. It says that there's another hit for the same domain. So somebody else has scanned this eight days ago. And it also says that there's 198 hits for the same ASM, but different domain. And these are sites that might be structurally, structurally similar to the C2 web panel. But we don't really want any of those because they might be false positives. What we want to do is click on indicators here and we get a bunch of hashes that we can use to search for matching C2 web panels. Now, I usually what I'll do is I'll just open all of them in a new tab and I'll see how many results we get. If it's a lot of results, then it's probably not gonna be a correct search. Our first one turns up 32, so I'll leave that, that looks correct. One of one, obviously, is just going to be for our unique one. Scrolling through these results, we don't see a slash login at the end, so I doubt it's correct because it doesn't match the normal format. Some of these ones with 32 seem to be more correct. Scrolling through this 49 one, it also looks correct. And after that, scrolling through the rest of them, we see some which have even more results, but they don't have that login at the end. So I'm going to go to our first few results, and this 32 looks as if the results are all going to be correct. We can click into some of the IPs, and we'll see that they all have the same web panel page and are likely other C2 panels. And so this search we can keep and put into our notes to search for different C2s in the future. Now, this isn't the only way of finding C2s. You don't have to use census. I find that its results are a lot better than Shodan's, but all of the searches that I've done can also be done within Shodan. I hope that this showed you a little bit of C2 hunting. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, goodbye.